daughter is missing. Beautiful young woman, tropical island, the media grabbed onto it. There's an American missing, there's a family that's lost their child. You just don't think it's gonna happen to your family. This fascinating story is set on the beautiful island of Aruba and involves the strange disappearance of a young woman. The tropical air is filled with many questions. Why did Natalie Holloway, a smart and hopeful teen, disappear during her graduation trip in the middle of nowhere? Was it the island's exceeding nightlife that drew them in? Or was there something darker going on? Watch the video to learn more about how conflicted people are and how they will never stop looking for the truth no matter how perfect things seem. What mysteries are buried in Aruba's sands? Let's talk about it in detail. Natalie Holloway, a student from Mountain Brook High School, disappeared in 2005. Born on October 21st, 1986, in Memphis, Tennessee, Natalie was an outstanding member of the dancer squad at her school and had a full scholarship to attend the University of Alabama. At 18, she traveled to Aruba with 125 classmates and seven chaperones to celebrate their high school graduation. However, her plans were cut short due to the trip. As they were of legal drinking age, Natalie and her friends spent their days swimming and partying at popular venues like Excelsior Casino and Carlos and Charlie's nightclub. Natalie met Dutch, Manjoren van der Sloot, who was 17 years old on the last night of their graduation holiday. They had a conversation while playing blackjack at the Excelsior Casino, and Natalie decided to schedule a later meeting with him at Carlos and Charlie's nightclub. At approximately 1.30 in the morning, Natalie was seen leaving the establishment in a silver or gray Honda with Jorn and his friends, Deepak and Satish Kalpo. At the time of Natalie's disappearance, her family had not arrived in Aruba and they boarded an aircraft to Aruba. They arrived at the Van der Sloot residence and were accompanied by two Aruban law enforcement personnel. Jorn initially denied knowing Natalie, but later revealed that he was aware of her and took her to the California Lighthouse region to observe sharks. He also delivered her to the Holiday Inn Motel where she was in the process of exiting his vehicle. Natalie was approached by a black-shirted individual who appeared to be a security guard as he drove away. An officer from the Reuben Police Department took Nick John and Abraham Jones into custody a little over a week after Natalie went missing. Both had previously worked as security guards at a hotel, but they would be released without any charges being assessed against them. Eight days after the first event, John van der Sloot and the Kalpo brothers were taken into custody on suspicion of kidnapping and murder. The Kalpo brothers claimed to have dropped off Natalie and Jorn at the beach, but Jorn claimed he left Natalie there and walked home. The Kalpo brothers are estimated to be around one month later, at the very least. Natalie will continue to serve another two months in prison. New evidence implicating them has been discovered, but the proof that they have this time does not appear to be particularly convincing. In November, they are arrested again for another two months in prison. Natalie Holloway, a student from Mountain Brook High School, disappeared in 2005. Her family, including her mother, Beth Holloway Twitty, were arrested and held in custody for several months. The Calpo brothers, were also arrested in November, and the case continues to unfold. The Holland inquiry into the murder of Natalie van der Sloot was closed by the Reuben prosecutors in 2007, but the next year they announced a re-examination. In 2008, a Dutch reporter installed a covert camera which captured Jordan admitting to removing Natalie's body from the water by using a boat after she had slumped on the shore. Despite this, a court did not issue an arrest warrant for Warren. Jordan has a new and scary story about the location of Natalie, asserting that he exploited her by selling her into a sexual slavery arrangement. He offered money in exchange for everything provided, 
which he later retracted. There is evidence supporting his most recent bogus account, published in November 2008. In the year 2010, Doran's father had a heart attack, which provided him with the opportunity to bargain with the Halloway family. Providing an initial payment of $25,000 and following payments of $225,000, Yorn makes an offer to divulge the location of Natalie's body in exchange for the information. Kelly travels to Aruba to pay Yorn a visit, and while she is there, she is carrying Tenhausen in her custody. Following the acceptance of the funds, Yon brings Natalie to a residence, where he informs her that his father is available at any time. An additional $15,000 is transferred by Natalia's mother to Yon's personal spanking account in the Netherlands, and New York manages to sneak away to a poker game in Peru. Both of these occurrences take place at the same time. Upon further investigation, it was discovered that the house Yorn proposed to the attorney had not even been constructed at the time that Natalie disappeared. As a result, it is unlikely that she would have been buried in the foundation of the house. Yorn acknowledged lying to the attorney, which is not surprising given that Yorn was involved in the murder of Stephanie Flores Ramirez, who was 21 years old at the time, in his hotel room in Lima, Peru on May 30th, 2010. Stephanie Flores Ramirez was killed on May 30th, 2010. On May 30th, 2010, Stephanie Flores Ramirez was killed because there were no instructions posted on the door to deter hotel staff from entering. This led to her death the following day. She had been traveling for a very long time before she arrived in Chile. A man named Yorn was found in Lima in June of 2021. He was wearing a red wig that had been dyed in a contemporary fashion and was accompanied by a taxi. It was decided to deport him, so he was taken to Lima and thrown in jail there. In addition to being charged with extortion and wire fraud, Yorn is also being held in custody after a warrant was issued for his arrest. In the wake of an inquiry conducted by the federal government, Yorn is being accused of attempting to extort $250,000 from Natalie's mother. These allegations are the result of the investigation. In spite of the fact that Beth had already paid the $25,000 in advance, the authorities did not make an arrest since there was not enough evidence to support their claim. According to the law, Natalie is formally acknowledged as having passed away after a period of two years. In 2012, Yorn freely stated that he was responsible for the murder of the woman in Peru. Nevertheless, he asserted that Stephanie had accessed his laptop without the requisite authorization from him. She was conducting an investigation, and during that process, she discovered information that established a connection between Yorn and Natalie Holloway. The jury decides that Yorn is responsible for the death of Stephanie and he is sentenced to 28 years. In prison for his crime, it has been brought to the attention of Natalie's family that he will not be extradited until after he has completed his term for the murder that occurred in Peru. With the life that Natalie and Stephanie were denied while they were detained, the concept of getting married and having a kid while you are incarcerated is a peculiar thing to do. This is especially true when compared to the life that they were denied while they were incarcerated. A private investigator named Gabriel was recruited by Natalie Holloway's father in the year 2016. Gabriel had previously been a roommate of John Ludwig, an American who had been one of York van der Sloot's closest friends in 2005. Furthermore, Gabriel asserts that he was John Ludwig's roommate at one point in time. After doing DNA analysis, it has been established that Natalie is not the owner of the objects, contrary to what was said earlier. In 2010, Ludwig disclosed that he had been Jorn's assistant in the process of disposing of Natalie's remains. Nevertheless, in the year 2010, Ludwig made yet another effort to kidnap a woman in the state of Florida 
who was attempting to flee from her own driveway. He was stabbed by the woman in an act of self-defense, and the stab wound ultimately proved fatal to Ludwig. On May 10, 2023, officials from Proof issued an executive order that was accompanied by the temporary extradition of Jan to the United States. Within the United States, he will be confronted with allegations of extortion and wire fraud. Following the conclusion of his legal proceedings, he will eventually be brought before a federal judge in Birmingham, Alabama for an arraignment, and then he will be sent back to Peru. The unusual circumstances surrounding Natalie Holloway's disappearance have left us with a sense of tragedy and unanswered questions. Justice has not been very forthcoming for Natalie and her family, despite them admitting responsibility for the incident. The latest developments in this case may provide peace and justice for Natalie's family. This is it for today. What do you think? What is the reality behind all this? Share it in the comments and also share this video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can never miss our video.